All right. Um, dear Professor Li Delan, uh, President Tan Jingguang, Vice President Chris Chow, distinguished guests, friends, alumni, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, or good morning, or good evening, no matter which time zone you are. Uh, I am Chen Qingyan, the Chair Professor and the Director of the PolyU Academy for Interdisciplinary Research, or PEAR. That is the organizer of this distinguished lecture series. I would like to express my warmest welcome to you. Um, PEAR is a world leader in providing interdisciplinary solutions for major societal challenges through advanced research and knowledge uh, transfer activities. At the present, at, at the present, uh, present uh, PEAR has 11 research institutes and five research centers with more than 400 senior researchers at the rank of uh, research assistant professors and uh, higher. And uh, we also have numerous uh, postdocs, PhD students and master students. So PEA has an annual research expenditure of uh, more than 560 million Hong Kong dollars. So before uh, today's lecture, I would like to uh, invite the president, Ten Jing Guan, uh, the president of uh, PolyU, uh, to give a welcome speech. President Ten, please. Okay, thank you, uh, Yan. I think uh, I'll be very brief. Basically, I want to um, attend this uh, uh, seminar and uh, you know, learn from Professor Li. And of course, since I attend, I would like to uh, extend my warmest welcome to uh, Professor Lee and our thanks to Professor Lee for uh, his acceptance to deliver this important lecture to this uh, lecture organized by PEAR. Uh, I have met Professor Lee many years ago when he visited us. Uh, I guess at that time, I was maybe dean of the Faculty of Construction and Environment. In our you know, at PolyU, we have uh, many uh, academic colleagues who uh, who graduated from uh, Wuhan University of uh, Surveying and Mapping. Um, our founding head of the Department of Land Surveying and Geoinformatics, uh, Professor Chen Yongqi, he was also, you know, he used to be, he was a graduate, I guess, also of that university. He was a professor there or head of the department there before he joined PolyU. So we have had a lot of um, collaboration from Professor Lee and his team and support from them. So I just want to take this opportunity to thank him for all his contribution to our development in the area of uh, surveying. Uh, thank you so much. And I'll pass this back to you, uh, Professor Chen. All right. Uh, thank you, President uh, Tan. And now I would like to invite uh, Professor Chris Chow, the Vice President for Research and Innovation at the Hong Kong Polytechnic University to uh, chair this uh, today's lecture. Professor Chow. Thank you very much, Yan. Uh, good afternoon uh, or good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is of great pleasure and uh, privilege to introduce <laughs> our distinguished uh, lecture speaker, Professor Darren Lee, who is going to give us a great insight into the development of geospatial information science, GIS, in a uh, digitalizing world in which the Internet of Things, IoT, and its application is rapidly developing. GIS IoT integration is a subject in which we should all be deeply interested because the pairing of GIS and IoT gives rise to a new emerging field of science and technology, which applications hold pivotal importance in and bring transformational changes to different aspects of society, ranging from infrastructure management, transportation development, disaster management to grid management that help build our lifestyle and our cities smarter. Today, we are very delighted to have Professor Darren Lee, who will share with us some of the key characteristics and scientific issues of GIS in the era of IoT. The research works of Professor Lee provide special meaning to PolyU's research development. As our two research institutes under the PolyU Academy for Interdisciplinary Research, PEAR, 
namely the Research Institute of Land and Space and our Research Institute for Artificial Intelligence of Things. They are working on research projects on areas like land analytics and management and big data analytics with artificial intelligence technologies and the generation of new solutions, which essentially evolve the fusion of GIS and IoT towards our goal for a more livable and sustainable city. I'm sure that Professor Lee's sharing today would give our members fresher perspectives and innovations to take their projects one step further. Our speaker, Professor Lee, is the professor at the School of Remote Sensing and Information Engineering of Wuhan University in China. He is an academician of the Chinese Academy of Sciences and the Chinese Academy of Engineering, as well as a member of the International Eurasian Academy of Sciences and the International Academy of Aeronautics. Professor Li received a doctorate degree from the University of Stuttgart, Germany in 1985 and has been unrelentingly engaging in uh, research. Particularly, Professor Li's work on the study of measuring error theory and treatment methods in the 1980s greatly contributes to the field of surveying and mapping and is described as having scientifically solved the patented problems for more than 100 years of measurement science. His research on the expandability and reliability theory won the best monograph prize from Germany's Photogrammetric and Remote Sensing Society in 1988, the Hansa Aerial Photogrammetric Award. In the 1990s, Professor Lee's research interest is mainly in the area of spatial information science based on the remote sensing, global satellite positioning system, geographical information system, and the scientific research and teaching works of multimedia communication technology. He led and produced the Geostar GIS series products. We formed visual telephone series products and lead S-type road measuring and steering systems for motor vehicles. He issued more than 270 papers and published eight monographs alongside his teaching of many postgraduate students. In 2012, Professor Lee was awarded the honorary member of the International Society for Photogrammetry and Remote Sensing. And in 2020, he was awarded the Brook Gold Medal in recognition of his outstanding contribution to photogrammetry. Professor Lee actively contributed to the field of surveying, mapping, and remote sensing in different capacities. Currently, he is the honorary director of the academic committee of the State Key Laboratory of Information Engineering, Surveying, Mapping, and Remote Sensing, the director of the Collaborative Innovation Center for Geospatial Technology and the chairman of Wuhan Association for Science and Technology, and also the chief scientist of the Optics Valley of China. Today, the presentation will be divided into two parts. The first part is a short presentation by Professor Li on the state key laboratory and interdisciplinary research and China's science and technology development. The second part will be an in-depth sharing on today's topic, geospatial information science, in the era of IoT. In order to avoid any influence caused by the instability of the network, this will be a pre-recording presentation, but Professor Lee will stay online with us and chip chat with the audience during the Q&A section. Please stay tuned. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please join me in welcoming Professor Lee. Dear President Teng Jingguang, dear Vice President Zhao Ruhan, distinguished guests, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, good day. I'm very glad to join this Hong Kong Polytechnic University seminar today. Before the COVID-19 time, I visited Hong Kong to the university very often. So, this is a good time today to 
give us the chance to talk together. And uh, fortunately, I will uh, shortly explain what about uh, my university and my institution. And uh, I'm from Wuhan University. I worked at the state key laboratory of information engineering in survey mapping and uh, remote sensing. Uh, shortly, this month, And uh, because uh, I get the invitation from the uh, Hong Kong Polytechnic University f following the interdisciplinary. So I worked at uh, Geospatial Information Science. This is uh, just the, from the geoscience, special science, and also information science combined with the service science. So we say in the international, the geospatial information science and the technology should we also say geomatics. Our institute or laboratory started in the year 1989. Through this more than 30 years development, we always task the national task dealing with the five topics. The first is the air and space photogrammetry. And uh, five parts. The second one is the uh, navigation and uh, location based services. The second one is remote sensing data processing. The fourth is the GNSS, remote sensing and the GIS integration with the network communication. The, the fifth is the geospatial information intelligent service that is the five parts from our laboratory. And we have in the 30 years, many many distinguished professor working at the uh, NISMARS, the head of NISMARS, uh, including myself and also Professor oh. Niu Jingnan. He works on the GPS Baidu and the GNSS. For the remote side and the GIS, this is Professor Gong Jianya and also the academician uh, working for the geodesy, this is Yi Jianchen and our best professor Zhang Zhuxuan. He is working for digital photogrammetry and remote sensing. Also finally, our nowadays director come from the Finland, this is Chen Reizhi. And uh, we work together, follow this uh, requirement of our government. And uh, so today I want to talk with you. The, the topic is uh, the, what is the task, challenge, and also chance for the geospatial information science in the air of the internet of things. It means nowadays we have the physical space. We have also the cyber space. From physical space, we can make a digital train to project to the cyber space. That is our task. So I will use this opportunity to talk with you. And uh, then I will move to my the video. Uh, you can uh, hear my the speech. After that, I will uh, answer your question. Please uh, uh, send my the, the video to the everybody. Thank you. Now you can uh, send my video 
from your side. My talk today is on geospatial information science in the air of IoT. I will talk in four parts. First, I want to say something about geospatial information science in the air of IoT. Then I will describe the features of geospatial information science in the air of IoT. The third part, I will talk about some scientific issue. That is three scientific issues of geospatial information science in the air of IoT. Finally, I will give the final remarks and the future of geoinformatics. Everybody know nowadays we are moving into the air of IoT. In the net of things, the cyber network of physical objects, combination of sensor software and other technologies to connect and exchange data with their devices and the systems over the internet. It will be the ubiquitous sensor network to find the real world. Information data into the cyberspace. In that case, our profession, the geospatial information science, is the discipline that focused on using geospatial information technology to understanding people, place, nature, and the process of the Earth. Spatial analysis of the human and physical variables. Is fundamental to geospatial information sciences. New infrastructure construction in China will happen in the next fifteen years. What is the new infrastructure construction in China? The new infrastructure construction in China include information infrastructure, integrated infrastructure. And innovation infrastructure. The information infrastructure includes communication network, new technology, and computing infrastructure represented by the data center and intelligent computing center. Also, our profession, that is the geospatial information infrastructure. Represented by the GNSS remote sensing and the GIS, this makes us very happy. The second one is the converged infrastructure. That means use this information infrastructure tool to let the physical objects, the static, dynamic, and spatial temporal change the data from the real world into the cyberspace. Cyber world, that means the digital twin, and the third part of the infrastructure is the innovation infrastructure. That is for the future, in order to promote the new development of the China. In this situation, I find at least five trillion industry can be. Drived by new infrastructure construction of to our geomatics. First one is the natural resources investigation, ecological environment monitoring, and emergency management based on multi-temporal real three D landscape. Second one is public safety and health industry based on the high precision spatial temporal the big data. The third one is the new smart city based on digital twins. The fourth is the intelligent driving and robotics industry based on 5G and artificial intelligence. The fuels will be to set up the real-time intelligent service system from the space 
airborne information service systems, including navigation, positioning, timing, remote sensing, and communication. These are five things we can do in the next 50 years that we can put any physical space objects feature human activity to the cyberspace. For the 5G, enhance the mobile broadband. The second one is the massive machine type of communication, which to the one mega per square kilometer. The third one is short uh, communication delay up to the one millisecond. Through these uh, characters, we can do more things in the future. Also, we should to think about 5G is on the ground, and we should uh, look to the whole world. There are more part of the world is the ocean area, so we should use the 6G. This is the space bone and the satellite communication system to find a higher access rate, lower access delay, fast motion speed, and wider communication coverage. In this situation, we can see from the SpaceX, the Starlink already put more about 1,800 satellites into the space can use this system for the communication in anywhere for any time. And China also set up the new agency that is GW. GW company will also put here, you can find more than 12,000 satellites into the space. And in the next five years, and the Chinese GW company will set up 72 satellites in the orbit, polar orbit, and also the 154 is a theta orbit to use this system for the sixth communication in China. Second part, I will point the character of the geospatial information in the air of IoT. I found at least five characters we can summarize. First is the satellite positioning. GAS will move to PNT, future move to PNTRC. Second one, our remote sensing, not as isolated satellites, will move to Earth's observation brain, intelligent system, into the space. The third one is the GIS. GIS what is uh, map databases should to improve to the true 3D databases and uh, also digital training. The fourth is the integration of remote sensing GNSS and GIS will be from the mobile mapping to intelligent robot services. Finally, we should set up uh, our system from the Earth observation to human observation. That is uh, satellite positioning GNS system nowadays. We have China, Baidu. In the world, we have GPS, uh, GLONASS, Baidu, and uh, Galileo, four systems. Use this four system, we can set up uh, these uh, PNT services. But uh, only use GNSS cannot uh, fear the goal of GPNT anywhere, anytime, ubiquitous. So we should think about uh, from the outdoor into the indoor navigation. In the outdoor, we can use GNSS, but uh, with indoor, we use a lot of sensors and also RF radio signals to cover the high precise larger coverage, and easy to deploy. Our number, we develop the new positioning system for the indoor navigation. We use the local smartphone based on the acoustic ranging method. There's four points can give the signals to the mobile phone. Mobile phone can get their positioning with the 12 centimeter accuracy. 
We compare our system with another similar system in the world. Our method is very good accuracy, good characters. Then we set this system for testing in the Deqing in the National Conference Hall. Also in the Baiyuan Airport in Guangzhou, you see these people use this system can get their position very accurate. That means the navigation from outdoor into the indoor. Further, we were from the PNT to PNTRC. And uh, this PNT will have such functions, the positioning and the navigation, timing, remote sensing, and the communication. We will give the design of the system. Actually, here you can see the half meter resolution for the imaging, half meter accuracy, positioning accuracy for the positioning, and also can give the very good function of the communication to the everywhere. We use our Loja satellite one to test these ideas means in our satellites, we can receive the signal from the GPS and from the battle in the two frequencies, and uh, we determine the positioning in the real time. Then send two signals to the ground in the air band. Use these two signals can enhance the GPS and also the battle system. And uh, the accuracy, use this method for the pursuit range can reach to two to three meters. For the carry phases with the communication, we can get this accuracy from the two to three centimeter. The second one, for the remote sensing, I think in the next, we will from the isolated satellites to the Earth observation brain. In the space, we have communication satellites. We have remote sensing satellites. We have navigation satellites. We should let them set up a network in the space and also put a powerful, the high performance computing units with the artificial intelligence algorithms into the space and connect this network with the ground network internet together. Use this the cloud computing between the space and the ground cooperation can service the five service. PNTRS to the end user to their the mobile phone. We say this is the Earth observation brand. Earth observation is the intelligent Earth observation system. Earth observation brand is a space, air, ground integrated information network, and EOB is a smart geospatial information service system. This is uh, the China in the first 50 years uh, research program for the high resolution use of the system. We launched already uh, 14 satellites, two for the high precise mapping satellites, and there is seven for the high special resolution satellites up to 0 0.3 meter in the space. The third one is high temporal resolution satellites. Use this 2 meter, 8 meter, 60 meter resolution satellites can easily to get the whole cover of the Earth of the China. And also in this case, we also develop two geostationary satellites with 50 meter resolution and 20 meter resolution in the space. For the high spectral resolution satellites, we have for the Gaofen, the one that is the Gaofen 5. Also, in this recent time, we also developed some the algorithm to automatic change detection for the UAV data. And we, through the communication system, get the data in the real time, process this data, make the digital auto photo. Uh, use the one, two seconds. Then we can use another 20 seconds to get final results to find the change to the end user.
that is our algorithm already used in China for emergency response. Of course, in order to set up this EOB system, we should to solve at least these seven key technical issues. Space-based navigation enhancement technology. Second one is space and Earth intelligent network communication technology. The third one is the onboard processing technology of the multi-source imaging data. The fourth is the space-based information intelligence terminal service technology. The fifth is space-based resource scheduled and network security. The sixth is the intelligent non-linear Earth reference frame construction. The finally, also should to solve the design and the development of smart satellite platform based on these pilots. There is the Chinese satellites. We put the intelligence software to the space, automatically get this imaging to search the objects to positioning this location, this information through the communication satellites sent to the ground finally to the end user. From the find the objects to get the information to the end user within one minute that is already tested in China. Another testament is use the Jinning satellites one and two use the Baidu short message communication. Find the fire detect place and uh, use the infrared imagery data to find the forestry fireplace and send this position through the Baidu short messenger communication method to the ground altogether only 50 seconds. China Wuhan University will launch next year the Loja 3A satellites. These satellites can do the onboard process in the real time, the cloud detection object detection, change detection, and geopositioning, data compression, and data transmission from the satellites to the end user within the few seconds that is our goal. Through these ideas, we want to set up our communication, navigation, and remote sensing satellites in the space system unicom and the space temporal fusing and uh, onboard data processing and smart service to the end user make this uh, remote sensing not only B2B, B2G, but also B2C to the customers. And uh, the third character is the GIS. GIS, the recent uh, years, we still keep the map databases. And in the future, China will develop uh, the true 3D imaging databases also put into the digital twin system. We are not more only use the map database, but also set up these real 3D imaging databases. This is Yungang Shikou's super-sized Yungang Shikou's three-dimensional three-dimensional model. It 让我们跟随镜头去感受三维视角下十三窟的震撼与美吧。首先看到的是十三窟主尊，交角弥勒，通高约达十三米，历经时间洗礼的主佛像。斑驳中，仍然神采卓然，头戴宝冠，眉眼含笑。胸前佩饰，隐约可见。右手臂肘下托比立式，视若跋山，向右缓移。这是仰望主尊的绝佳视角，尽显弥勒佛的威严与庄重。十三窟窟顶，是整个云冈椭圆形洞窟之穹隆顶，保存最好的一例。主尊头顶与窟顶相连，深光火焰纹间处雕刻了长条状的波形忍冬光云
，忍冬开花结果，生机勃勃。此外，枯顶两条巨型交手龙，伴有两臂张开的天人飞翔，好似二龙王翻江倒海，天人出世。来到现存较好的东壁地面，东壁基本保存北魏石刻，由上至下，佛像龛样式丰富，尽显汉风。不仅有圆拱龛、鹿形龛、乌形龛和塔形龛这四种基本龛式，其中的重眉鹿形龛，更是佛教艺术中龛式设计。力求变化的代表，腰壁上的天人供养列像，是全窟唯一一个以主尊造像作为供养对象的供养人行列。南壁早有一门一明窗，窟门与明窗之间，东西长达十一米的通栏里，塑造了七佛的形象。七佛像各个脚踩莲花宝座，身着包衣帛带，庄严肃穆，神采奕奕。明窗左右两臂分别站立了一尊面向窟内的菩萨像，形似日月的圆形装饰较为少见。南壁上层，靠近西壁侧与东壁侧。结构相似。继续向右，来到西壁。经清代补刻，壁面复彩重装，色彩艳丽。在文物三维数字化技术的加持之下，像云冈十三窟这样珍贵的、不可移动文物，不仅得到了永续保存。数据之外，整窟模型的三维可视化。还让石窟寺文化飞入寻常百姓家，进一步彰显了云冈十三窟的历史、文化与艺术价值。With two hundred thousand pictures, the data volume very larger, and also use this three D data model can display this the full the civilization in the ancient China. If we move from the map data bases to the true three D and digital doing, we should think about、uh, the neither data the fusing from the space. Airborne and groundborne, and、uh, also mobile mapping system. We can get this from the airborne, ground-based mobile mapping system, and also carry the lidar, and also we fusing them together. The fusing accuracy can reach to three centimeter. And、uh, for this、uh, mesh model, we should move to the real three D individual vector models. That is very comprehensive task. We can use this method from the Doctor Shen, the integrated work to set up this individual three D the vector data from the mesh model. Of course, we can also get another the three D frame vector. This advantage is if we just only set up a three D frame vector, we can do fully automatic with the deep learning technology. You can see the such results fully automatic to get this、uh, the frame vector data for one frame, another frame. So you can see, and、uh, use this method, we can also put some description into the system. Like the real three D data model, and use this method, we can set up the smart city. What is smart city? Smart city is we use the three D GIS for the urban area. Put a beam and IoT together, 
Southeast is the CIM. CIM describes the real city into the cyber space. Uh, this is for the industry factories. We can set up uh, this real 3D, the factory model. This is for the oil and the gas plant. So we can get this digital doings, use our method. And in uh, that case, we can do accurate mapping, the virtual reality interaction, and the software defined, and also intelligent feedback to the real city. That is uh, our physical city. We, through the 5G, 6 beam, GIS, IoT method, put this digital twin into the cyber space. In this space, we can do analysis, computation, and also feedback. Then we can, through the cloud computing, produce the big data and AI method to control the real cities, make the city more green, more efficiency, and more intelligence. Geostar Smart City Operations Center is a multi-temporal switchable platform based on big data and cloud computing technologies, providing several modes to implement scientific city management, command and control. In the screen center, you can see an all-in-one big data smart map of the city. As you can see, highlighted animations represent taxi trajectories, where density reflects city traffic pressure. For the three major train stations, the system counts passenger flows, showing the number of passengers in real time. The diagrams spread around the screen show city operation indicators, also known as city KPIs, related to city management, public security, transportation, water, and so on. We can monitor city operation status in real time using these KPIs. When the smart city system is running, it receives information and incidences continuously from different locations across the city. As at the location of each incident, a cursor appears and blinks showing the new dynamics. The system assigns each of the incidents to corresponding departments for disposal. For example, the cursor goes through important revenues. The module monitors passenger and train station areas in real time and utilizes sensors to identify biological features and identification, filtering passenger information. It detects targets with criminal records or special notifications promptly, enabling fast controlled deployment. Digital Twin City is an advanced stage of digital city and a new level of smart city. The developer trends of the force is the mobile mapping system will move to the intelligent robot services. The developer trends of the mobile mapping include the connotation development uncertainties, the application scope expand grounding. New smart sensors are constantly emerging and the number of sensors is increasing geometrically. Cloud data, ubiquitous data processing, new application and new business models. And uh, in this case, we can understand what is the intelligent car driving. That means we should use the hardware, software, instead of the human eye, ear, and the brain to drive the car. That's possible. And we develop such a special intelligent the robot service hardware. Put Baidu GPS with the initial navigation system and also to put this, the optic sensors and uh, neither sensors, any sensors put together, will is put into the cars. Then we can get these results from the mobile mapping to robot mapping, and uh, this is our the hardware. Through so this hardware, we're going to many many different kinds of robots. This is a power inspection robot.
Also, we develop all terrain mapping robot. This tracking can automatically running everywhere in the field. And uh, that is also a very intelligent system we have already developed. Make this possible to use for every car. This automatic uh, intelligent robot service to find uh, environmental changes, to find the uh, moving objects. The fifth character is our profession. We are from the Earth observation to human observations. Light time, night remote sensing, we can find uh, the civil, civil war. This is uh, the battlefield. This is the peace areas. Beirut. Well, after four years of conflict, Syria has become a much darker place. Scientists from China's Wuhan University, along with a coalition of NGOs, have analyzed several satellite images which show the number of visible lights over Syria at night has fallen dramatically since March 2011. Researchers use these images to track the movement of people who've been displaced from their homes. Also in the urban area, we can use this method to track the urban mobility, the heat maps, the car flower, and the people flower. Use this data, we can solve contact tracing the distance between the people to people. The smart emergency platform of Wuhan traffic management is an important part of Wuhan traffic control brain. The system, aimed to deeply integrate multi-network resources, provides dynamic and real-time access to all kinds of emergency situations, such as police intelligence, police force, traffic conditions, accidents, video bayonet, emergency rescue, police linkage, signal lights, water logging, and meteorology, a map showing. Big data analytics architecture for traffic control based on the analysis of real-time traffic flow data. With the combination of historical congestion data, road information, and vehicle speed, a set of congestion index algorithms have been developed for some functions, such as accurately estimation of congestion levels of roads, real-time rankings of road congestion, Comparative analysis between historical congestion and real-time congestion, video verification, major activity security, real-time scheduling navigation, and congestion event playback. It provides decision support to the traffic control department with the problem of block. Using cloud technology of smart transportation and GIS technology to realize the standardized disposal of traffic accidents, a new model of road emergency response has been built reaching up to quick notice, quick approaching, quick rescue, quick separation, quick survey, quick withdrawal, quick compensation. Seven quicks was innovated. Our city of Wuhan used this uh, smart emergency plan make very good results. The first one is uh, the traffic congestion. The system improved the Wuhan city from the 23 to 53, and also make this uh, handling time for the accidents from seven minutes to 90 seconds. So our Prime Minister, Kei Changli, visited Wuhan special to see this system for 50 minutes. Third part, I will talk with you about three scientific issues the first is how does the map product service the both needs of the human being and the robots. The second one is the mechanism and the technical bottleneck of the remote sensing imaging intelligence interpretation. We still keep classification or we use the ontology method to do semantic describation. The third way is how to use the big geodata mining to answer the question about the relationship between the human and the nature. 
how does the map product serve not only the human being but also the robots? Because in the future there are already many many robots stay with us together, and、uh, we should service not only the people but also for the robots, for the transportation. The signals of the transportation signals is shown to the people, but we should move them through the signals to the robots to the automatic driving brain. That is some idea about、uh, this augmented perception and、uh, co-decision making and、uh, make the smart control. Control this paper, also this automatic driving system. Second question is、uh, the nowadays our remote sensing imaging interpretation also to do classification, make simulation. Is this good for the future? I think there's problems because the ambiguity of the classification makes it impossible. For the humans and the computers to produce 100 percent correct interpretation results, uses the artificial intelligence methods. You can see some examples. The examples one is different experts has different opinion. For example, for the one same the remote sensing imaging, the agronomist said this is the Here side、uh, grassland, the forestry people say this is suitable forest land. They will use the two different signals, different class into the area, but it's the one picture, the same picture. The examples in China we find the coastline. The for the coastline, some people like the high water level. This is for the ocean people. This is、uh, the oceanographer. They want to use the higher water level, but for the land、uh, experts, they want to use the low water level. That is some problems. So we should use ontology databases and the semantic grid methods. If we use the real three D city model. Then we put this、uh, VR, AR, IR technology. We can with the semantic description put into the these databases. So, for example, for the automatic driving system, we should from the global point of view to see this four network. Then, for the street points, you can see the detail, and for the this for. The street point of view, and、uh, the, for the the car point of view, we should see the real detail for each car. Also for the city, like we do the test in Wuhan city, we need this normal the imaging into the in three D. Then we should see the overview of the city and we the indoor of the city in the three D. And outdoor of the three D, we should use the beam structure to do real investigation. So we also to find、uh, this is、uh, for underground system. The third one is、uh, how can we use the geographical big data through the data mining to answer the question, the relation between the human and the, the nature. That is.、Uh, Always the common problem in the big data area. I started this research in the 1994. I worked together with my young brother, also Shen Tao, and we developed this spatial data mining methods in the year 90s. Nowadays we have the English book, spatial data mining, the Chinese book, and the third the vision. This is the father of GIS. I met him in the year two thousand seven, and now that we should move into the geocomputation, we open this new research center for the geocomputation. So my opinion is, we can do special temporal AI in the different scale, in the physical space. We have the global doors. And、uh, space, 
we have in the real the space, architectural space, the city, the society. We have also the professionals. This is the terminals, smart terminals, the human, our the car, our mobile phone. So we should set up uh, the cyberspace, that means Earth observation plan. This smart society, smart city, smart communication. And for the terminals, we have the smartphone. We should have the smart car. So that is our task, I think, we can do for our profession in the next 50, 20 years. Now to my conclusion. My conclusion is the era of IoT brings us opportunities and challenges for geospatial information science. The second one is the five features of geospatial information science in the air of IoT are summarized in this report. The third one is the three scientific issue questions I mentioned in this presentation. For the future of geospatial science, I think IoT provides real-time data, ubiquitous. The smart GIS is emerging. And the exploit of the value of the big data is our task. And the GEO artificial intelligence is a new approach for the smart earth. We can make our contribution to the society, to the world. That's my talk. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for uh, the wonderful uh, presentation by uh, Professor Lee. Uh, let's move to the Q and A uh, section, uh, chaired by uh, two panel members, Professor uh, Ching Yan Chen, who is the director of our PolyU Academy for Interdisciplinary Research Pair, and he is also a uh, chair professor and a uh, global STEM uh, professor. Uh, the other uh, panel member is Professor Chi Hao Wang. Uh, he is uh, the associate director of our research institute for land and space. He is also our chair professor and a uh, global STEM uh, professor. So without further ado, I'd like to pass the floor to uh, Professor Chen and Professor Wang for uh, running the Q&A uh, section. All right, okay. Uh, first, I'd like to thank uh, Professor Lee for the wonderful uh, presentation. You know, I am a layman on this uh, serving, but I guess I learned quite a lot through this lecture. So I see the quite a number of uh, questions already um, been posed there. So for the audience, if you have more questions, please go to Q&A uh logo on the bottom of the, your screen and then you can type the questions there and we will um uh, classify them and then uh ask a professor lee and to answer those questions so the first question i have is um about the accuracy grade of the sound source positioning when you use a sound to do the positioning right and then for example, if you are in a warehouse environment, there's a lot of um, uh, obstacles. So that's at least a sound source of positioning technology will work in this type of environment. Uh, you ask for the absolute positioning accurate. Yes. And uh, nowadays, if we use the Beidou system, Baidu system has already the Baidu three has thirty satellites in the space, mm -hmm. and also together with the Baidu two generation, sixteen all together we have in the space fourteen six satellites from Chinese Baidu system. Also in our system, we put the, in the space enhancement system we can working on the pbp and also uh, between different satellites we use the communication and also the laser determination system to set up the in the space 
this is the network. So our the accuracy provided to the end user. If we use the ground enhancement system, we can reach to the centimeter, one centimeter for the plenary, three centimeter for the height. Mm -hmm. If we use the differential system, also we can get a millimeter accuracy. And uh, our system, I, I know from the Beijing, we will provide the mobile phone user. Nowadays, we work together with the Huawei system and also the Chinese made the, the mobile phone. We can provide a five to 10 centimeter accuracy for the mobile phone. And the second one is for the Chinese remote sensing uh, satellites. Nowadays, from USA, from the European Union, also from China, we are working for the absolute direct positioning. It means we provide you the imaging, satellite imaging with the accuracy in the absolutely three to five meter. The next stage will be one meter. That means we can use the onboard system to get a picture from the stable, the star, star camera can get the image from the star. From this system, we can determine the uh, the the the, the uh, situation, and also the positioning. We use the Beidou, We can get to the five centimeter accuracy. Use this method, direct get the imaging in the ground accuracy from the five meter, three meter to one meter. That is the tendency, not, not, not only from China, but also from the French, from the USA. And uh, this is what about uh, the positioning accuracy? Uh, I can answer this question. Let, that's great. I mean, for outdoor, definitely it's uh, look, it's very accurate. But how about the indoors? If you are in an airport or in a warehouse or in your office, so and, uh, for the indoor navigation and uh, the 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 Uber from the USA, they has their solution. Uh, but uh, we provide a solution. This uh, is in the indoor. We set up uh, at least the four the 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 voice signal to you. Then your mobile phone, no change your mobile phone, just put the one ABP, your progeny accuracy will improve to the half meter. We tested already in China and uh, Guangzhou airport and uh, Nanjing train station and Hangzhou train station, also Wuhan, the uh, larger airport. And uh, we also send our proposals through the uh, academy uh, the, to the central government. We we will put this voice positioning system together with the video, the video, and uh, the audio. These two signals can get you with imaging and also the location. That is, uh, we propose to the government. Of China has. Uh, the biggest, bigger the, 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 the project, this is the, uh, for the police office from the whole China. We set up this in the open area, not uh, in your family. That is the open area, like airport, like hospital, like university, uh, the school. And we want to uh, suggest, we have to suggest to the government. But no one is just to make some the experiment. We need maybe need some time. And uh, this solution is totally by ourselves and uh, independent. And also uh, we produce from the, 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 the ship to the uh, hardware, software, all things we provide from our side. That's the indoor navigation.
Thank you. So I will turn this to uh, Qi Hao. We'll ask questions in turn. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you, Professor Lee, for, uh, for your excellent talk and uh, for sharing the frontiers in geospatial information. Uh, so we see a lot of questions here, a lot of interest in your talk. Okay, so one of the questions I think that uh, I see uh, multiple times is uh, how to, uh, as we, you know, uh, the sensors, satellites have become higher and higher resolution. So how to balance those, uh, the personal data privacy and the geospatial information collection? Professor um, I understand. <laughs> Forever <laughs> okay. the, the security, it's very, very important issue to the uh, every country, and uh, because we are no one is we have the cloud system. So if we put this, uh, the first thing we use these very accurate devices to monitor this open area, put this information to the the the, the cloud cloud. For your permitter, you can get your necessary information about yourself, but you cannot uh, information about another person. This uh, you, information tell you what about your the truth, your trace is security is safely, but you cannot uh, another people's information. This is controlled by our. This is uh, the. Uh, cloud and also the 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 the, the uh, terminal, the security keep in the cloud. The, each terminal can get only the information they need. Also, they can get the information. Not uh, you can get every information. That is also uh, the same thing. We should uh, pay attention for that. <laughs> Thank you. Technique can provide us this solution. Okay, the next question actually is a lot of big. I try to combine several together. Um, people I admire your past research very much, starting from leader method um, a few decades ago. Now you develop into different areas. And also uh, people are very much interested in knowing, you know, the integration with the education and also the development here in Hong Kong and et cetera. So the actual question is uh, how uh, do you see the challenges and opportunities in uh, the area uh, you are involved in and what do you, what well, you suggest to the young people to work on this field in the near future? I think uh, uh, with the develop of the technology, nowadays we are the human being, we are work together with the robot uh, the, together. There is some people say this is the, 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 the metaverse. I don't like what is the, 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 the metaverse, but I think uh, if only the human being working in the, uh, the, 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 the natural environment, that is nowadays, but uh, in the future, if you can see there are on the way so many robots work together with you, what is, that is the new situation. So we should use our technology development research to improve our the first thing, for our sensing, we can get the more uh, uh, ubiquitous the sensor network around the world. So we can get not only this uh, the ground the the, the 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 background, also the activity of the human being, the car, the 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 the, the, the goal, goals. So everything will be sensing very fast with the internet of things. And with the, the, the next generation of the communication, uh, 50, uh, 60, the we can also uh, get a, a lot of benefit. Also for the uh, 
data processing, we can use the AI method. And for the description, we can use the VR, AR, IR, and a lot of the new tools. I also think and this technology will help the people. And of course, we should let the young generation to learn more about the fundamental knowledge, about the, 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 the uh, new technical development. And uh, of course, I think uh, and uh, our university, even the Chinese government also uh, make uh, the decision, uh, work together with the UN. And uh, uh, UN, the Office for the Geoinformation Knowledge and the Transfer Center, uh, already sent uh, up in China, in Zhejiang uh, province, the Duqing, the small town. And uh, China will make the, the more contribution to the UN's SDG, Sustainable Development Goals in the year to 2030. And uh, for example, uh, China has uh, uh, the global mapping uh, task. We can do the one to 50,000 map uh, uh, every year about the three, uh, 30 to 40 million square meter. And uh, we use this method to help uh, uh, the other country to set up their the databases. Also for the real 3D modeling, uh, we have our own software and hardware. So each city in China, most uh, and the larger city, we use the three centimeter resolution. And uh, for the countryside, we use the 10 centimeter resolution. So use this method, we can update the data very fast. And uh, I think uh, and, uh, in, the, in the future, not only the communication satellites like uh, uh, Starlink, they will launch uh, for, uh, 42,000 satellites from the, the, the mask. And for the remote satellites, I have also idea we want to launch all together 200 satellites with the half meter resolution satellites. We can uh, search the data every five minutes to the everywhere in the earth. So that means this is, uh, I think this is the new the trends we should follow. And uh, Hong Kong has very good relation with our mandate. So I think we uh, uh, we will continue already the friendship. We, in, we can enhance the exchange and the friendship. So this is my idea. OK, uh, thank you. Uh, Professor Lee here is a, another quite technical qu uh, question here. Uh, it's, uh, it's asking what are the major challenges in moving from the PNT to PNTRC? Earlier, you, 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 you talk about one of the characteristics is the, the development uh, in GNSS is the development from PNT to PNTRC. And so, uh, they wonder that you know if you have any any thought about these the major challenges here in the development. And uh, you know, and uh, ten years ago, uh, the USA started PNT program, and uh, then we talk uh, in China, we will follow the PNT. At that time, I I remember is the uh, twenty. Uh, uh, 12, uh, 2012 year, and uh, we talk in the Hangzhou. I think uh, we can follow PNT, but we cannot stop in the PNT because positioning just the one point, navigation just the one line, timing just the one the time point. We still need 
the massive information from remote sensing. So we put, put the remote sensing together. P, A, N, G, this is R remote sensing. But this information should send to the end user. So we should enhance the communication facilities. So I suggest we were uh, working not as limited to PNG, but uh, can move from PNG to PNGRC. The one example is in the, uh, the like uh, the, the emergency happened, the people ask for the environment very fast. But if we use lower system and uh, isolated satellites, because communication satellites, remote satellites, and uh, and the navigation satellites always working in the different disciplines, different people, different group. So I started that time. I suggest we should follow the PNTRC. And uh, in the year I I think the, in the year 2019, uh, I got the, the 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 support from the Chinese Academy of Engineering. We collect uh, and uh, 20. Uh, people, professors, to send our proposal to the central government. We, China, will work on PNGRC. But this is also a very hard task because uh, we should solve, I, in my presentation, the seven problems we should solve. At the other time, I got the support from the central government. I collect different professors for communication. I call the people from Tsinghua University, Lu Jianhua professor, and for the uh, navigation, the Liu Jingnan, for the onboard data processing for myself, for the uh, geo service, I asked the Gong uh, Jianya, and also uh, different people, for the organizer, the maintenance, the satellites with the requirements. I asked uh, the Zhang Jun from the uh, Beijing uh, the Airspace uh, University. Uh, so we still keep the research on that. Also, the Chinese uh, Foundation for Natural, Natural Research Foundation gave us uh, the 400 million. To, 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 to do this research already uh, uh, 10 years ago. So I think this is uh, something we work for the, this task. But this is their problems. Ah. Uh, and uh, I, this is. Uh, uh, why I still work very hard because no one is, I ask more to the commercial task in the year uh, the 2014, I sent the proposal to the central government to make air air space activity commercialization. The government said yes. So from the year 2015, China opened this uh, uh, market to the everybody. That is a commercial satellite program started in the year uh, 2015. Also, uh, through this method, we moved from the central government to the marketing, asking the people to collect uh, uh, technology, technique, the, 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 also the money to set this new system. So, lower as I'm working with the Shandong province people. We said uh, our the new program today is uh, the Orient Smart Eye program. <laughs> All right. Yeah, well, thank you very much. That's um, uh, great. And there are also uh, quite a number of questions uh, regarding this uh, uh, virtual model. Uh, you, you just mentioned also the metaverse. Uh, now, for those models uh, to work uh, uh, with the um, static uh, object, like uh, you show in the Yungang cave, it looks very good. But uh, how about if you combine with the dynamical devices, like cars or whatever? 
So in that way, how what type of modeling method will you recommend to solve these type of problems? And uh, for the smart city, we need uh, first uh, this is the background that is real 3D uh, data model. After that, we need to use different sensor web to collect the special temporary data, like the human mobility and the car movement, and also such is the temporary special data input. We should use the sensor web network that is the Internet of Things. That is also a very hard task. We should to find cheaper, the, the accurate, very accurate, also very cheap, the sensor uh, to get this information, reach the time. That is a very dynamic, reach the time information put into the real 3 data model. That is the digital twin. It is, means the, the, the people, the human and the car, the goats, also the, the air, the water, uh, the atmosphere. And uh, so such information, you, we should also let them, the, with the time, dynamic, automatic, uh, collect into the cyberspace. That, uh, we can work on that system. So there are very, very, very tasks. Also in, into the indoor, we should also combine the, the beam, the architecture model into the system. So we uh, still need a, a lot of work. In China, we have already some uh, cities uh, did a uh, very good uh, testament and uh, for example, Qingdao city, they also get Qingdao, Shanghai, Wuhan, also Shenzhen, and uh, they make some the experiment. Also the minister of the nature resources also help people to work on that. Thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, I think that uh, there, there are still a lot of technical questions. But I, uh, at this time, I, I want to ask a, a more broad questions for Professor Lee. Uh, you know, Professor Lee, the, you know, uh, recently uh, the Hong Kong government, you know, uh, decided to uh, to develop into a international hub for for the science and technology, and uh, the central government also, you know, uh, support this uh, initiative. And uh, in your opinion. Uh, you know, uh, what, what, what kind of, uh, you know, uh, the research or the innovation activities in this area in the, in the geospatial technology to Hong Kong focus in order to, uh, to you know, to, to develop into an international hub? And uh, uh, I'm very happy to know that Hong Kong will set up uh, this smart harbor. And this is very, 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 very nice program. For this program, I, I, I suggest first, you, you, you will have, you should have a, the, and the, the, the team, a leadership team to do the system design. And the, 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 from the top, design is most important. Make this is the top design. Then you will uh, send up uh, some the, the scientific issue, some technical issue, some the economic issue to send uh, this to separate in the different uh, and, uh, program to collect the experts to work on that. Then also you should uh, start on the one part of Hong Kong, not uh, to the core hunger first to set up a way a test area. Then if test area is successful, then you can go to every Hong Kong everywhere. So this is my uh, suggestion. Also in China, we also make the similar the, the job. And uh, 
otherwise, uh, of course, in that case, you can collect uh, the cooperation uh, from the uh, international people. And uh, we also uh, very uh, in, in, interested into this uh, program. For example, indoor navigation. We, will, we can provide our indoor navigation system. We can ask Chen uh, Reizhi. He is from the, the, the Finland, come back to China. Uh, so you can connect him uh, personally, ask uh, he to visit your, your Hong Kong uh, political university to, to a demonstrate area. He, well, I can ask him to provide some the hardware put into your your university to set up a test field. That is uh, the possible. It was we produce this system, and uh, this is uh, we can start from this uh, this part. Also, we provide uh, this uh, totally automatic uh, software package for the generation of the bigger area in the. Real 3D, this is not uh, the, from French CC model. This is our, the, uh, the, the model from the, our number. This is uh, the, uh, the Get 3D, Get 3D software. And is also uh, working already many years. This is a very good system. We can also suggest uh, our professor Huang Xianfeng, because Huang Xifu married with the Hong Kong lady. So uh, we can ask him to visit your uh, score for the cover months, then we can make, make uh, some cooperation. I think this is a very good uh, uh, the, the, the situation. We can make a cooperation. The Chen is he is easy to go to Hong Kong because he is the citizen of the Finland, not the Chinese citizen, so <laughs> easy. And also Huang Xiaofeng, because his wife is in Hong Kong, so he visits Hong Kong very often. So we can start from this uh, field. Uh, three, 3D generation to the every dif dif difficult area, like a factory, like a catcher size, uh, like uh, the, 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 uh, the city center. So uh, I can uh, ask them to talk uh, to contact with you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor Lee, for your suggestions for the collaboration with Wuhan University in terms of infrastructures and people exchanges. I think that will be very helpful yeah, in, uh, in, in the future development. Thank you. All right. Um, now I would like to ask um, a more technical question. Because you have already showed the great uh, achievement by combining the IoT uh, with the uh, GIS for solving the uh, city scale of uh, problems. But if uh, we try to uh, apply the technology to the indoor uh, spaces, you show that you can use the cell phone and then the sound to make it happen. So what happens if we make it more challenging, for example, for the underground conditions or even in the waters, and then um, what type of technology you, you see um, the possibility for such applications? I, I just said, uh, uh, nowadays, if we go to the space, it's easy. <laughs> but uh, to the underground water, a uh, little difficult. To the underground is more difficult. So that is the, 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 the technical issue. That is the nowadays situation. And uh, I think we still need uh, to work hard to find a solution. And uh, I cannot answer your question very accurately, but uh, and uh, I just say we can do uh, our best to find a solution. But uh, uh, of course, we, we still need uh, to find a new innovation and a new technology. And, uh, this is also some task. May, 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 maybe something we should think about the new materials. For the mobile phone, we can receive the, the GPS because it's the airband. And for the, the, the uh, imaging data, very 
larger volume of the data. Maybe we should use the K band, but K band, we need a lot of antenna. If we have the new materials, can get the four uh, channel receiving materials, can also use the mobile phone to receive the K band information. Nobody is, is impossible. But uh, maybe in the future, if some people div invent the new materials, use these new materials, we can receive the any channel signals that make our very easy because uh, the starting uh, need uh, some antenna on the on his bed that's very big but if we solve the new materials we can solve the problem thank you okay uh here's uh, an interesting question actually uh uh someone asked in the in the 1980s uh, you uh, you you initiate you develop uh, the Lidella method, and in the nineteen nineties you propose the definition of geospatial information and establish a theoretical system for it. And so you have a lot of other achievements in the twenty first century as well. And so the question is that, uh, how can how can you become the interest in these areas? What 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 reasons drive you? And uh, are they are, are there any uh, important and meaningful area that you 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 want to uh, to talk uh, about about this uh, your, your viewpoint in the future uh, development? <clears throat> and uh, nowadays uh, we are seeing uh, we publish one book, namely the. Geo information for <laughs> I I published this English version to collect my paper more than one hundred papers together. I will send you a, a, a copy if I meet you to Hong Kong next next time. And uh, I my my idea is we get our life from mother, so we will study to read book. There are so many books in the world. That is a collection of the knowledge, experience, everything you can read the book, supposedly you're reading. The same way thinking, because you have the brain. After reading, you can thinking. Maybe you can find some problems. Then we will do the, uh, in the, in the innovation find your method, find your solution. Then we use this uh, uh, reading, thinking, innovation, then you will do practice. This is the cycle. Through the reading, thinking, innovation, and the practice is a cycle. You will get some results, contribute to the society. That is my life. <laughs> I also suggest that everybody Especially young people, you should you should follow this uh, uh, the, the 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 rule, and you will make a, a happy life. And uh, this is my suggestion. <laughs> Wonderful, yeah. Reading, uh, thinking, and uh, uh, creations, innovations that make people uh, happy, <laughs> a happy life. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Professor Lee. Yeah, well, thank you very much for your advice to young people. And now I'd like to ask your advice to pair this uh, Polyu uh, Academy for Interdisciplinary Research. Um, you, I know that you have been serving at the Chinese government as an advisory board for interdisciplinary research for the National 973 project. Um, in the past uh, like uh, 15, 20 years, right? That you have uh, really found that a lot of uh, interdisciplinary well, research. So can uh, you share uh, your experience with us why interdisciplinary research is so important and what do you see the future development on the interdisciplinary research? Uh, good question. And uh, I remember my teacher, Professor Wang Zizhuo, 
in the year 1986, he sent to me nowadays the each discipline will be not only in the deep of his field, but also move to the in the discipline area to the to see another discipline. They make uh, integration with them. Maybe you can find a new direction, new discipline that is the, the talk from my teacher sent to me. And also he said, and uh, working study on the deep discipline. This is the, the second trend. The, the larger trend is move to the boundary to talk with another discipline that is in the discipline, discipline research. That is uh, the, the talk for my teacher. And uh, for my government, and uh, in the recent years, they also find and uh, uh, the innovation mostly happened in the interdisciplinary area. So, and uh, uh, China, uh, the Chinese, uh, the university, and uh, the, the China, the, 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 the government also asked to enlarge the interdisciplinary the field. And uh, last year we make uh, this uh, proposal so the central government remote sensing has uh, recognized interdisciplinary in China. And uh, because the remote sensing, uh, before that there is no such discipline. Discipline we have for geography and, uh, and electricity, but uh, no remote sensing. But then uh, last year we proposed our, pro our proposal to central government. Finally, they say yes. So since this year, uh, Chinese university can set up a new discipline so that is remote sensing technology. <laughs> and. Uh, uh, you are also working on this uh, in the discipline area. I, I, uh, congratulations. You will have for the very the intelligent task. Also, uh, I also uh, remember Professor Wang Zhuo's talk. This is correct. And uh, you can work in your field very, very deep, but also you can go to the other discipline to find some of the integration. And in this case, you can find a new field, new research, new market, new opportunity. I hope uh, the, your university uh, through your work will enhance uh, the, uh, the, 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 the power, uh, the facilities and mm -hmm. the training the, the, a lot of the young people make, make, they, make them can find a new opportunities your task. Yeah, thank you very much for your, your, your advice and also your encouragement. So uh, we are working uh, on that. And now I see we have uh, Professor Suwendong wanted to ask a question. So Professor Su, please. Yes, Professor Lee, uh, thank you very much yeah, for your talk. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine, thank you. Uh, and as I haven't seen you for three years. <laughs> uh, uh, you, you still looks very young, very healthy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Good. Yeah, may I ask a question for the, uh, you know, we are working on smart city, right? Uh, so from your view, uh, our technology, photogrammetry, uh, remote sensing, and the GIS, from your view, how those uh, next technologies, uh, 3S, uh, can contribute uh, to the smart city development in the future. So thank you. <laughs> and uh, of course, the photo digital photo photometry will make uh, the bigger uh, uh, contribution to the smart city. And uh, uh, for the former, we also produce the map, one to 500 map to the city. But not as we should send the, uh, the three centimeter resolution, uh, the digital 3D landscape model 
to the city. That is the big task. But not, not only from the ground, from ground to underground. And uh, this is the one thing that is the smart city basis. You say Diba basis. The second one, we can also help people through the intelligent sensor network to collect the spatial temporal data. Not only cover the leisure objects, but also uh, the human activities, the societal activities, and also the dynamic uh, atmosphere, dynamic uh, water cycle, dynamic uh, the, the, the bio cycle. So that is also the big task challenge to our profession. So I hope we can make more contribution including the photometry and also the high resolution satellite imaging. And uh, that is uh, uh, the task. And uh, we have many uh, research group working on this field. And uh, the Gong Jianya, Professor Gong Jianya, he make his big program to set up a Loja set and Loja let he will uh, send, uh, build the largest imaging databases as the set to help people as the examples to do the deep learning. Then he also put a lot of powerful hard software. We here to process this is uh, the multi imaging, multi resolution, multi scale. Mm, also, the uh, different uh, temporal imaging. So that means the temporal and the spatial and spectral put together, fusing this data to get output for the uh, classification, change detection, and the dynamic moving. That is also our task. We we have many many people working on this uh, the field. That means uh, the imaging interpretation, and also we want to set up uh, this uh, uh, the new databases. We want to work on the uh, the, the uh, semantic description. That should set up this uh, the. And the, the, the new uh, the network on the ontology the, the bad databases that is also the new task we want to to find some solution on that your uh, institution also can work on this field I think yeah and also we move uh, more from the photogrammetry to the computer vision to the machine vision to the robot uh, control. So one university, we have many, many good young people. They also produce this, the, the machine dog. <laughs> 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 Some young people and uh, set up uh, the machine dog. Some people work uh, the, 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 uh, the metaverse for the university one one university, so that's very active in the in our the, the university. <laughs> yeah, great. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, you're right. I uh, photogrammetry remote sensing for uh, form the foundations for smart city and the different data sets and uh, uh, geometry, thematic and the multi temporal data. Yes, uh, we we. Hopefully after COVID, <laughs> then we can come to the uh, Wuhan University again and then to talk with colleagues more on the uh, geon research in that area. <laughs> very look forward to that. And thank you very much for what you shared today. We have learned a lot from you. Ah, uh, you're welcome. <laughs> Hope to see you soon. <laughs> yes, after that uh, COVID, I will come <laughs> and then I see you come to see. <laughs> Okay. The colleagues. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, thank you very much. I think uh, now yeah, the time is up for the discussion. 
I'm sorry, we have still have so many uh, questions. Uh, we don't have the time <laughs> to ask Professor Lee, uh, unless he wanted to stay overnight and we can <laughs> ask a lot of questions. So uh, uh, thank you, Professor Lee, again, for your uh, wonderful uh, lecture. It was so very um, informative. So now I'd like to turn back the time to uh, Professor Chow. OK, uh, thank you very much for uh, organizing this uh, wonderful um, uh, distinguished uh, lecture. And thanks a lot for uh, Professor Lee of uh, giving us uh, so many uh, wonderful insights um, about the technical part and also about the um, direction of uh, this uh, particular area and also um, a lot of uh, wonderful uh, suggestion on how we are able to make good use of it to uh, support uh, the development of uh, Hong Kong into a um, international innovation and technology hub uh, by embracing uh, smart uh, cities and related uh, technologies. Um, so uh, on behalf of uh, PolyU, I'd like to give a big uh, applause uh, to uh, Professor Lee. And uh, I think the uh, at the end of uh, today's uh, event, uh, Professor Chen, do you want to uh, also say a few words about uh, the uh, coming up uh, activities of uh, PEAR before we uh, finish uh, this uh, section? Yes, uh, thank you, Professor Chow. Um, yeah, PEAR organizes these um, um, lectures uh, every month during the uh, academic semesters. So today is the first lecture in the fall semester. So next month on the October the 18th, uh, we have a, a, a couple who is, both are distinguished professors of computer science from Carnegie Mellon University. So they will share us a lecture entitled uh, AI, uh, Consensus and uh, Ethics. So um, all of you are invited to attend the le lecture. Then in November, we already have um, uh, Professor Kathleen Ann Moller, who is the vice provost and the dean of research from Stanford, will give a, a lecture uh, on site if um, the quarantine in Hong Kong is uh, removed. And if it's not, probably that lecture will be deferred to next year and then we'll have another uh, online lecture in November. So thank you so much uh, for all of you in participating in today's lecture. And we are looking forward to see you again in our next lecture. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, thank you, thank you very, very much, much, Professor Lee. Yeah. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Thank <laughs> you.